This is the first of the 3D text tutorials. First, you want to start After Effects, and we will create a new composition and name this composition with your last name, your first initial, and 3D text. Make sure you have the preset HDV, HDTV, 720, 29.7. That will give you a composition that is 1280 pixels wide, 720 pixels tall. You want the pixel aspect ratio to be square pixels, 29.97 for the frame rate. And then down here with duration, you want it to be 5 seconds. The background color, just leave it black and say OK. Now I'm going to reset my standard workspace. And I'm going to go to a single view to begin with. Okay, this is my standard workspace. I'm going to be working with text, so it might be a good idea to get the text workspace actually. So let's go ahead and turn it to text. And now we want to make sure we have this saved. So file, save. And you want to have a folder to put it into, and I've got one called my last name, my first initial, and 3D text. And I'm going to save this project. I'm going to save the project as my last name, my first initial, and 3D tutorials. My last name, my first initial, and 3D tutorials. And I'm going to make sure to put it into a new folder that I'm going to call 03 or Project 3. No. I'm going to put it into a new folder that I'm going to call Project. And save it. So now I have a folder that I can put my all of my components, my my assets into, and I have one that is a, an asset already that is the project. Okay, so that's saved. We want to turn on the title and action safe guides so we can make sure that anything that we put into our project will not be cut off by the outside of somebody's equipment. If they have anything that is not going to have the outside edge of the screen in complete and total focus. If there's any any television set that's going to be looking at it that's going to have some kind of a little frame around it that covers part of the screen, some of these things still happen. We want to make sure that it, everything's inside of those. Now, you can always monkey around with that a little bit, but when you have text that must be read, keep it inside of the uh, title safe, which is the inside box here. If there's the outside box is action. This is title, and then these are the other aspect ratios. This is your 3 by 4 screen in the middle, and then this is your old movie screen. So those are the different sizes that you have in the action in title save. Double click on the text tool to create an insertion point in the center, and you want to type your name. You want to make sure it's 100 points, so select all the text and then type 100, and you want to make sure that it's white. And then click down in the gray so it deselects it. And now we're going to double click on the text tool again, get another insertion point, and we're going to type the name of whatever our job title will be, or whatever we're planning to do. I'm going to say Digital Designer. Okay, 
Now that we have Digital Designer, we want to select that. Double click and it makes it that red line around it means the red color around it means it's selected. We want to make this 48 pixels. That's 48 pixel right there. And in order for it to be visible, we want to move it down. Use shift and your down arrow key so it's down below your name and so it's not touching but just very close. And then you want to select all of that again and let's change the change the tracking so that it spreads out to be just about as wide as your name taking into account that you probably have letters at the edge that don't reach down to the bottom of the line so I'm going to say right there because there the D is right at the, the bottom of the B so that's where I want it Okay, so now we're going to say, let's command S. We've got what we want, we know what we want, and there it is. Now we're going to click on the selection tool. Let's make sure we have the selection tool. And we're going to go to layer, new layer, solid. And let's choose a blue-gray color. This is a good one and say OK. It will place it in front of your text. You will drag it down below the text. So that's what we've got so far. Now we want to enable 3D. So we'll come here. This is the 3D layer. Allows this layer to be manipulated in three dimensions. So click in each of those little boxes and that field will turn into a cube and now we have 3D. So now if you go to the position for each of these, you will see that there's three settings. The X, which is wide, the Y, which is tall, and then this is the Z, which is backwards and forwards in space. It's towards you, negative number, away from you, positive number. So now we want to place the words towards the viewer, so let's type negative 150, And that brings it towards the viewer. Negative 150 towards the viewer. So now the words are closer to us. And now we want to get a light because when you have a light you can see the shadows. So go to layer, new, light. And first we want to choose a spotlight. Now the settings for the last light that was added will be in here. I like the intensity for a spotlight to be about 75 percent. And I like the shadow to be maybe 50 percent. Make sure that cast shadows is selected. This is by default usually it's off. You want to turn it on. You can also turn it on and the materials options under the 3D layer, but right now we can turn it on here and say, okay, there we go. And you see, with just a spotlight, you don't get a lot of light, so you want to have layer, new, light, and we want to have an ambient light. An ambient light, leave it at 75%, an ambient light doesn't cast shadows and it actually doesn't even have a direction it's just a light see so now you can see everything very nicely now we want to make sure that the background layer and the two foreground layers will actually cast and receive shadows so I'm going to type AA that opens up their 3D material options and for the text, we want to make sure that it will cast shadows, so turn that to on. And then we go to the name, cast shadows, and that's on. Now, already you can tell the background is accepting shadows. Now, usually, by default, accept shadows is turned on. 
unless somebody has turned it off. So always check. If you don't see a shadow, it might be that, or you may not have something separated in Z space. So if I turn this to only, the background disappears, but the shadows are there. If I turn it to off, it will not accept shadows, but if you turn it to on, it accepts shadows. Now we can look at this with two views, one from above, and it shows you that this is the background layer, this is the blue, and I'm going to click over here and collapse everything. So this one is the background, the name is there, and they're both in the same Z space, but you can tell they're different lengths. And then your lights, here's your spotlight, and then your ambient light doesn't have a symbol because it is ambient, it's just filling the area. That's what ambient light does. So that is how you set up your space. Now, we can put in some motion to make it more interesting. So at first, Command S, to make sure that you save your project. And now we can move the text so that it will fly in. So we've got our two different views so we can see where things are. Now we're going to press P. With nothing selected, it opens up all of the position settings for all of them. Now we want to move the text so that it is no longer in the viewer view screen, but first we want it to end up in this position. So in order to do that, we just drag our CTI to where we want the text to stop. And then, at that point, that's where we want the keyframing to be. So we want a keyframe there. We're not moving the medium gray solid. We don't have to worry about that. We can just lock it. But we want to move both of these lines of type. So I have keyframes for both of them now. I come back to the first frame, and I want the name to fly in from above and in the foreground. Now, to make it fly in from the foreground, we have to put in a negative number. So negative 1,200 would be a good number. It'll bring it very close to the viewer. And now we want it to fly in from above. So we want to make the Y coordinate larger or smaller. We want to make the Y coordinate smaller so we drag it until it goes off the screen. Just barely. And then we want it to go from one side. So let's drag the X value until it is off to one side. Okay, now we want to do similarly for a digital designer. We want to have it coming in. And we want it to come, say, from below. So we'll drag it till it's below in the Y, making it a larger number. And then we will take the X and move it over to the left or the right, over to the right. Now you can change the curvature of the path. If you select the keyframe and then you can drag the curvature in either the above view or the side view. And you can do the same for your name. I'm going to make it bigger, to make it bigger. Yeah, so I can grab the handle. I can make it a little bit more of an interesting curve then. Okay. Now we command S. Now, let's say we want the name to come in sooner than the title. So we can have it starting at the beginning and coming in 
at three, about three seconds. And then this one, we could have it start a little later. This command S. I'm going to go back to a single view and I'm going to do a RAM preview. Now you notice that the light is at negative 444.4 and the text is coming from negative 1200. So it's actually coming from behind the light. Therefore it will not cast a shadow until it gets in front of the light. The only light that is lighting the text before it gets there is the ambient light. So that's why there's no shadow until it gets that much closer. Okay, so there you go.